So 51% attacks have been hitting some of the most popular coins in the crypto space lately. For example, in the past few months, we've seen attacks on Verge, Ethereum Classic, Bitcoin Gold, and many more in the crypto space. So if you're curious about what exactly this kind of attack is and why they're happening more often these days than before, then all you have to do to learn more is just keep on watching. Hi everyone, I'm Kevin from Bitcoin for Beginners here to bring you interesting informative content with no frills nor fluff. Now, just real quick before we dive into 51% attacks, if you could support us by smashing the like button and subscribing down below if you haven't already, I would appreciate that immensely. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, so a few of the videos we've done in the past are from our content partnership with Hotobot. What they are in the highest level is a trading bot for Binance to help you rebalance your portfolio automatically I suggest you go take a look. I'll leave the links down in the description below, but they're hotobot.io. And if you want to read this original content by Anthony Shea, their founder, you can go to blog.hotobot.io and it's at the very top. So a little background about 51% attacks. Many coins use proof of work algorithm in order to stay decentralized, right? Because you need to get equipment like mining GPUs or ASIC miners in order to participate. And it's hard for someone to buy all of that equipment because it costs a lot of money, a lot of maintenance, a lot of electricity in order to do so. So that's why it creates decentralization in that way. It's hard for one group or one person to own all the mining equipment. If you were able to control 51% or more of the whole network's hash power for an extended period of time, then you could double spend. And what that means is that you spend your coins once and then you revert that transaction. I'll talk a little bit more about this later. So basically you'll have your original coins back and receive whatever you got for that initial trade. So what used to prevent this from happening? Well, many mining rigs are optimized for a specific algorithm, so you can't switch easily between mining, for example, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Monero. You can't switch back and forth like that at ease. You have to have equipment for each one specifically. It also used to take a large upfront investment in order to get enough hash power for attack. Remember what I said, you had to buy a lot of these hardware, build up a huge farm in order to get a lot of hash power. That just wasn't feasible for people to do. And also lastly, just opportunity cost, because if you attack a coin's network, then you'll have that coin to begin with, right? Or else you wouldn't be able to double spend it. You'll also get block rewards in the form of that coin as well. But its price may drop rapidly if you attack the network, because that makes other people lose faith in that network's ability to operate without being under attack. And hence, the value of your coins are going to drop as well. Maybe not what you want. So that's something to take into account as well. But things are changing in 2019. First and foremost, it's easier to rent hash rate than ever before. We're gonna cover this more in the following slides. But also there's more ASICs for various coins. Many coins have forks, and so a lot of them share the same mining algorithm, whereas in the past, everyone used different mining algorithms per se. You see more and more large mining farms done by like corporations with maybe millions of dollars to spend. It's easier to short crypto, which makes it better for you because remember what I said, the third one about the opportunity cost, about dropping the price of the crypto once you attack the network. Well, now you can profit off of it if you short it. Also, as the bear market continues, lower prices means that less miners are interested in participating, means less hash rate, means a less secure overall network. And finally, there are more exchanges available to target. Now, why are we talking about exchanges? I'm going to cover this a little bit more in a later slide as well. So the mining market has become more and more liquid, and this is growing. Why is that? Because people expect the total hash power to grow in the long run. So as long as you expect crypto prices to rise in the future, or the cost per unit of mining power decreases by technological advances or other various optimizations in the mining operation, then you expect total hash power to grow in the future. And the percentage of rentable hash power is also increasing because if you think about it, this economy just makes sense for both renters of mining power and lenders of mining power. They both benefit from focusing on different aspects. Instead of having to worry about the entire mining operation from bottom to top, renters can focus on finding the opportunities with the highest ROIs in terms of which coins they want to mine at a certain time that will give them the highest returns. Also, lenders are able to diversify their rental income to reduce their risk across algorithms and also focus on other things like 
rental relations, on maintenance and upkeep, and more. They don't have to spend all their time finding opportunities with the highest ROIs. The renters do that. So attacks are already possible. This is from the Crypto 51 app. You can search Google for it. And they show the proof of work 51% attack cost. You can see in this image has the biggest coins, the symbols, market caps, the algorithm they use. Like you can see Bitcoin and all its forks use the same SHA-256 algorithm and their current total network hash rate, Bitcoin being the most, and followed by Ethereum, etc. And they also show you what a hypothetical one hour attack cost is if you wanted to rent 51% or more of the entire network. And so Bitcoin is quite a hefty cost. It's over $200,000 for one hour rental and Ethereum is 66,000 and it just decreases from there. But the problem is that you can't always rent enough to reach 51%. This assumes that that amount of mining power for each network is available. Now they are available for some coins, but for Bitcoin, 0% or it's a really small amount basically. It's nice hashable, nice hash being the biggest rental marketplace. And then Ethereum is 5%, Litecoin is 6%. And then as you get lower and lower in market cap and lower and lower in hash rate, then that shoots up. A lot of them have over 100% able to be attacked or rented by NiceHash. Now, some things to note. First and foremost, this does not include calculations of the block rewards you would receive. And so remember, if you mine a block successfully and add it to the blockchain successfully, you get rewards from most of these blockchain networks. And so that can offset your rental costs and make it cheaper. On the other hand, the rental price is scaled based on the spot price in this rental market. But in reality, the more you rent, the more expensive it is because of supply and demand, right? The rental is not going to stay at the same amount if you try to rent the entire amount needed to do a massive 51% attack. As you rent more, people are going to be like, oh, there's more demand. I'm going to raise the price too. So NiceHash is the major one and it's really easy to use. This is just a user interface. Very simple to rent from your computer, hash rate, and you can earn coins and so forth and configure stuff as well. Very simple to use. And here is just a chart that Anthony made. It's on their blog that I pointed out earlier, but here are some vulnerable coins to attack. And these are a little bit smaller symbols on the left. You can see how little it is, like a hundred bucks to attack ETP using ETHash for an hour. And the more time you rent this 51% attack or the more you rent that's available, then the more likely it is for you to be able to pull off a double spin attack successfully. Now, assuming five times the current rental capacity, which means that the amount of hash power for those networks will increase, assuming that increases, and that's very likely to do so, even some more larger coins that we all know of become vulnerable to attack. You see Dash, Bitcoin Gold, Vercoin, and more. And those just being in the thousands, some Bitcoin millionaires could easily attack these networks without sweating at all. Even they use random algorithms like X11, Zhash, Lyra, and more. So one question to ask and think about is how do these attackers make money? Because they can't sign a transaction unless they have your private key. So as long as your private key is never compromised, you never have to worry about anyone stealing your balance. However, they can do a double spin attack. And how this works is as follows. First, you spend your coins somewhere else. Then you mine blocks secretly. Usually when you mine blocks, you want to broadcast it to the network as you find it so that you can add it to the blockchain and get your block rewards. But let's say you mine it in secret. So you mine successful blocks and keep adding the secret blocks on top of the existing blockchain in secret, but they form a legitimate blockchain. And then once you have a longer chain than the one that's out there in the public, you broadcast it with your previous spent coins left out. That transaction is not in your new longer blockchain. And so because the rules of the blockchain network goes as follows, which is that they always take the longer chain with the more work accumulated as the legitimate one, then you receive your initial coins back while you receive something for them already. So let's say you use it to buy something big like a TV and you get that TV immediately and they're like, oh, okay, there's a few block confirmations. Everything's good to go. You can take the TV and go home. Meanwhile, at home, you're mining secret blocks and then you put out a new one 10 blocks later saying that you never spent those and it's completely valid because you put in the work and excluded that transaction. And so you get the TV and your coins back. That is a double spend attack. 
However, having 51% hash power does not guarantee that you will build the longer chain. But statistically, it's more likely as time passes for that to be true. And also, if you have more than 51%, let's say you have 80%, then that means you have an even higher chance of being able to double spend and requires a shorter time, statistically speaking, to do so. So where to spend the coins? Well, exchanges are primary targets because you have a lot of people having demand for various coins on exchanges. So this is another snapshot I got from Anthony's article. And what an attack would look like is as follows. Choose a target network or a coin that looks profitable, accumulate coins on that network, rent nice hash hashing power, and silently grow your stealth chains. Go on some exchange, trade these coins for another currency like Monero, Bitcoin, whatever, withdraw those coins, and then broadcast the long stealth chain onto the network so it becomes public. And then at that point, you revert your initial transaction, get the coins back, and you repeat with a different exchange. That's how you would do it. So of course, exchanges don't like that. How would they react? They can increase with deposit and withdrawal periods so that they continue to look at chains. And maybe they notice like, oh, at the 11th chain after your transaction, it was reverted. So we're going to take away your balance because of that. They can do that and make you have to wait longer for confirmation before you can deposit or withdraw. That means that attackers have to build longer chains in order to succeed, costing them more money, more time. But this may be a huge hassle for regular traders like you and I, because we want to withdraw our stuff, deposit, and trade seamlessly, right? They could also increase you know, your customer verifications for accounts, which a lot of people don't like in the crypto space because they want privacy, but that way you'd be able to better track attackers and sue them or get police to get them, per se. They could also delist the coins that are small and likely to be attacked. And Anthony wrote this, his opinion, I share as well. All coins purely for speculation should die anyway. So maybe this is good for weeding out those altcoins. Ideally, we would see a mix of all the above solutions and maybe more. And there will be a balance between the rules placed by exchanges, making it harder for attacks. And also the cost of attacks would raise until eventually there finds a balance in terms of how strict the rules need to be. Coins and projects may also react to this attacks by changing mining algorithms to something more obscure perhaps, so they won't be able to rent hashing power to attack them. They can also do checkpoints per se to prevent rewriting a chain past a certain block. This is not foolproof of course, but it could help a little bit. You could also combine mining efforts with other coins like merge mining with Bitcoin, an ERC-20 token which mines with Ethereum, etc. Also, maybe explore new consensus algorithms that are more resistant to these attacks. Remember, these 51% attacks are for proof of work networks. Maybe you could do proof of stake. Of course, proof of stake has its own huge challenges and hurdles, but just in terms of this regards, it may alleviate this. So what's next? Well, the rental hash power market could grow 100x or even 1000x in the future. Which coins are really safe is a big question. Will the market value larger coins with super large mining networks more? Or maybe they'll value smaller coins with less security less. We'll see, I guess. And this is a screenshot I got from Anthony's article as well. To quote a Hacker News comment, rent a miner attacks seems like another amusing example where the emergence of a market can break a system. Satoshi foresaw people trying to mount a 51% attack by buying a ton of machines, so he went to great lengths to ensure this was unlikely using mining. I don't think Satoshi foresaw the liquid AWS-like market for instant hashing power. The ability to mount a limited a time 51% attack may see attack literally a thousand X easier than the traditional buy a machine 51% attack. That's really interesting. Satoshi isn't God. He didn't foresee anything. And so this is a problem facing blockchain networks now. So thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I enjoyed this a lot when I read Anthony from Hotobot's article. Definitely go check them out, but also give us a like. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. This is Kevin and I will catch y'all next time.